you go. Today's haul. So we've just come back from a seed swap event in Saikong. It was great. We got to meet other home gardeners and gardening enthusiasts. Everyone got to share seeds, cuttings, seedlings, and of course, experience and stories and ideas. And in this process, you of course develop a community. So I, I really love these kind of events. As you can see, I got quite a few different plants here from the event. But for this episode, I'm going to talk about three that I've never grown before, that I've done some research on, and I'm going to talk about what I'm going to do with them. Wish me luck and let's get started. Number one on the list, Shiso. This perennial herb comes in different colors and shapes, from green to purplish to reddish, and often can be found garnishing sushi dishes. It's cultivated widely throughout Asia, but can be found worldwide and grown as an annual plant in more temperate climates. Soil should be kept moist and have good drainage. Shiso can handle full sun to partial shade. They also make great ornamental plants indoors with enough sunlight. So these two I've already repotted. I'm going to let them establish a bit more before I move them into a larger pot. In the process though, I'm going to be taking cuttings from them. I've heard that they're really easy to propagate, so that's the goal. I'm going to take cuttings from them, see how well they propagate. And you also do want to pinch off the top every now and then just to keep, uh, you want to promote more side growth. So you want bushier plants as opposed to one long large stem that just flowers and that's it. So these are the shiso. I'm really excited about these ones. Number two, Oxalis triangularis. Native to Brazil, this perennial edible comes from a huge family with many edible relatives, including this patch of lavender sorrel that's living life as ground cover for one of our mulberry trees. I'd recently eaten some of it on a previous episode when I went foraging with DJ Clark from our drone and phone show. Although quite hardy, false shamrock, as it's commonly called, can't tolerate too much heat, so I'll be keeping it in partial shade as I monitor its progress. It's supposed to do well indoors and its deep purple leaves and pink flowers contrast wonderfully with green plants, making them seem more lush and vibrant. So, if you've got some windowsill space, these fellas can be a nice new addition. So since they've just moved here and have just topped up the soil, I'm going to let them establish first, see how they go. If it gets too hot in the summer, I might cut them back and keep them in the shade, but they're pretty hardy and they're perennial and they should come back throughout the year. And we'll see, I'll probably move them to a larger pot down the line. But until then, we'll let them stay safely snug in here. And last but definitely not least, <laughs> you're not going to believe this. Agave. As in tequila or agave syrup, but also tequila. All right, it's highly unlikely I'll be making any tequila. And not just because the law looks unfavorably on moonshine. They take a long time to mature, flower, then fruit. We're talking somewhere around 10 to 25 years, depending on variety and conditions. In fact, last year, there was talk about how global demand for tequila had spiked and production of agave in Mexico couldn't keep up. Anyway, like aloe vera, they produce offsets, also called pups, babies that can be separated and replanted. Fortunately, agave enjoys being root bound, so now that I've repotted them, I'll let them establish before I migrate them to larger containers. No idea how big it'll get eventually, but it's an experience I'm up for. I just need to check moisture once a week. The consensus seems to be it's better to underwater rather than overwater. So there you have it, the three new types of plants we've added to the garden from the seed swap that I'm excited to see develop over the year or in the case of the agave, it's years for sure. We do have some other cool things as well, like the chocolate habanero. I'm excited to see how that's gonna develop. These wing beans I've never tried before. I've heard great things. Uh, we'll see how they go. And there's also this one right here, the globe artichoke. This one I'm really keen to see how it grows. It's supposed to get up to five feet tall and they take up a lot of space, but they can do well in a pot as well. So I'm gonna repot this at some point and see how this goes. Stick around for that for a future episode. But until then, thank you guys for watching. Thank you for sticking around. And we will see you next time. Happy growing.
By the way, how, how genius am I? I basically worn the exact same color shirt as the Oxalis. <laughs> flowers? No flowers. Flowers? No flowers. Look at that camouflage.